Now on the channel, I've covered a lot of Zeus's premium laptops, their ZenBooks, but here we have a more affordable model. It's the VivoBook 16. There's also a 14 inch model and it's powered by the Qualcomm Snapdragon X. This comes configured with 16 gigabytes of RAM and a terabyte of storage, and it is running Windows 11 ARM. So it's not Windows X86 or 864, but the ARM variant, and I'll be running over the performance and exactly what you can expect out of this affordable laptop here from ASUS with that Snapdragon chip. Included with a VivoBook 16, we've got our charger, 65 watts. Now that weighs 215 grams. The laptop is 1.88 kilos. For a 16 inch laptop, I don't think that's too bad. They have kept the weight down a little bit by using plastic, so it's all plastic, there's no metal build. Not as premium as the ZenBook, of course, and it's not meant to be. This is a more affordable laptop. So we have a smooth surface on the lid, prone to a few little smudges. Yes, it can be opened up one-handed, which is good. Palm rest, again, the plastic, nice and smooth. The touchpad does support their smart gestures from ASUS. I don't really have too many complaints about it. It's not as good, again, as the ZenBook. I guess it's to be expected, them being the more, more premium models, of course. Keyboard, it's good. I like it. It's not backlit. There's not really that many compromises apart from the arrow keys here. Power button is located here, so you're not going to accidentally hit that, which is good. And we get the number keypad. That's included with the 16 inch version. With the 14, of course, you don't because the 14's are about there. So they don't have room to fit that in. There's a little bit of flex and the feel of these keys, they're quite silent too as well, is good. I like typing on it. If you're gonna do a lot of typing, I think it's a great keyboard for that, which is great to see. What else is great to see is plenty of ports. So we've got HDMI 2.1. We have two type C's that are 40 gigabits per second. Type A port, this USB 3.2 Gen 1, so 5 gigabits per second for that one, and 3.5 millimeter with mic support. Remember, this is 19.9 millimeters, the thickness. So it's not the slimmest of laptops at all, but the good thing about it is the build is very solid though. So it's gonna be able to take a few drops and whatnot. It does have military grade drop protection, status LED. And here's another type A, which is also the five gigabits per second. You're gonna get max speeds out of this one. The underside is made of a matte material. There's a screw in the middle. So this is why the keyboard doesn't have really much bounce or flex to it. We've got two downwards firing speakers here and I'll give you a sample of what they do sound like now. As you can hear from that, they're okay. They're nothing amazing. The screen we have is 16 by 10 aspect ratio, 16 inches, and it does have an anti-glare coating. So it fares well with bright lights, no reflections coming through on it. It does a good job of diffusing them. However, it's not a high-end panel. This is an affordable laptop. So we're looking at just a 1200p resolution and a brightness of officially their measurement is 300 nits. However, it's a little bit less than that. It's about 260 that I can get with this panel and the maximum brightness. It's fine indoors, that is good. And I feel for what this is going to be used for, which is documents, spreadsheets, media, things like that, it's perfectly fine, but it's not for professionals. This has a 45% NTSC color gamut coverage and Adobe RGB of around just over 60%. So again, it's just really for basic work. So for people that are gonna be doing what this is designed for, I feel it to be an acceptable screen. It certainly is nothing amazing. So up the top here, we do have a webcam and we've got some IR cameras too as well for Windows Hello to log in. And I'll give you a sample of that webcam now. So it is full HD and I find the quality to be acceptable. The audio, it does sound good too from it. So be fine for your video chats and the quality will be exactly the same with the VivoBook 14. After all, it's the same hardware. Here we are on Windows and it is Windows 11 Pro that we do get with our VivoBook 16. Now for RAM, there's 16 gigabytes and it's running at that 8448 mega transfers. So just over 8,000, well, almost 8,500. Very good speeds, but only 16 gigabytes. However, for what this laptop is designed for, that's kind of light use emails, media, documents, spreadsheets, stuff like that, that is still gonna be adequate, this 16, I feel. 
If it was a more demanding laptop that had some more powerful integrated graphics, then I would feel it would fall short a little in that side, but really it doesn't. Now, performance wise, it feels quick and snappy. Documents, spreadsheets, things like that all do run well. I've tested out open office on this and there's really no issues with that. We've got plenty of power. Now, if I do show you uh, the synthetic benchmarks, which I will in a sec, hang on, but I wanted to point out one thing. So we do have Wi-Fi 6E with this. I think that's really good. And there you'll see our chipset, which is the Snapdragon X. And we have our MPU part of this too as well. So it's got 45 tops for the AI performance, if you're interested in that. And I've covered AI previously with the other Zeus videos uh, with the Zen books that I've done and pretty much the same kind of deal here. So I won't repeat myself for that. So the synthetic benchmarks show us that there is a weak side to this particular chipset and that is the Adreno graphics, not particularly powerful. Graphics care score for Firestrike integrated showing it doesn't even reach a thousand. Now what we have with a Radeon, for example, integrated graphics, the 780M or the 890M, you're looking at somewhere over 3000 points. Intel's Arc can also get close up to 3,800, almost 4,000 points total score here. So there's a big difference. So that is the weak side of things to this. Now the performance, looking at Geekbench, it's adequate, it's okay, it's decent. Multi-core score, not bad for the eight cores. Single core, yeah, it's it's not a speed demon here either, but there is a good side to this. And that is that if you're using it, this is on the AC, so plugged in, and then on the battery, the performance is almost, almost identical. You can see there's a slight drop in performance, but it is very, very minor. Basically the same performance on the battery and off it, which you can't say for X86 machines. This of course being an ARM chipset that's running. Now compatibility issues, have I ran into anything? No, but a lot of apps will be running in the compatibility mode. There's a lot of stuff that just simply isn't native. For example, Adobe Premiere Pro, video editing, that is going to be emulated. They don't have a native version for ARM just yet with this model. Now that one terabyte SSD, it does perform well. You can see excellent speeds out of it. Good random 4Ks there and no complaints for me with the selected SSD, great speeds. Now video playback with a very demanding 4K file is a little stuttery. At the beginning, it certainly does have a lot more dropped frames. It's not too bad at the moment but I've noticed that it is not amazing. And that is, again, you can see what it's like because of our integrated graphics, the performance of it just, you know, lacking a little bit there. So if you intend to play some super demanding files, then you will run into a bit of choppiness. YouTube performance now at 4K, I wanna set it to the 4K preset, 60 frames per second. Let's see how it decodes this. That is smooth, that playback. You can see it is not dropping frames. In fact, I'll enable the stats just to confirm that. No, it's not. So, okay, occasionally it drops one or two frames there every couple of seconds, which I find to be completely acceptable. I'm in Chrome here and it's doing a good job of decoding this. Now, if you wanna do something a little bit more demanding, that is 4K video editing. It's possible with the spec, with the Snapdragon X, the timeline can be, as you see here, a little slow to catch up to exactly where I am. Now, this is a very basic video of mine. There's not a lot of grading. I don't think there's any color grading going on with this early clip here, one of my own uh, reviews from way back. And skipping you here, it's not bad. Now, the playback resolution for these 4K files, which by the way are 100 megabit per second, is set to a quarter and occasionally, it drops a few frames. It's not 100% fluid. Now the export times, I've tested this out because this is not hardware accelerated. Remember this is emulated with Windows 11 ARM. It's slow, so be prepared for that. This is a 10 minute and 40 second clip. It's gonna take approximately 22 to 23 minutes to encode this to 4K. So yeah, that's not good at all, very slow. So if you're going to be doing a lot of video editing, I don't recommend this laptop for this. Take a look at Azusa's uh, ZenBook series is much better suited to that. You're gonna have a lot more power and then it will be running natively on X86 or X64 and not ARM here being emulated, which does affect the performance a little bit. As for gaming, basic light games like this one here, Asphalt 8 in the Windows Play Store is playable. It's smooth enough. Occasionally you get a few dropped frames but I wouldn't go any higher than this kind of level of gaming. 
on this kind of spec of laptop because the integrated graphics is not going to be really that great unless it's a very old title and something light like a store game like this one. No surprises here that fan noise and thermals are good on this laptop because it does not have a huge amount of power. The only time you're ever going to hear that fan is if you game a little bit and that's pushing both the CPU and the integrated graphics a little and it will come on. It's nothing too offensive and as soon as you stop the fan will go away too as well. But if you're watching movies, documents, spreadsheets, it's super quiet and you normally don't hear anything. Battery life is good because, well, it's an efficient chip, the Snapdragon X. This can go for eight to nine hours in my testing with just light workloads. So documents, spreadsheets, YouTube, Chrome, movies, that sort of thing is what this is designed for. So not video editing, not gaming. Its strength is definitely not that. Clearly with the performance of the integrated graphics and the screen. The screen is not a screen for professional use at all. It's anti-glare, so it's a very practical screen. It's bright enough that indoors it looks good. And even outdoors, it's still going to be legible. And we have these anti-glare, well, matte bezels around the outside. Good to see. It has a infrared camera for logging in with Windows Hello. It's got a decent keyboard and a good build quality. Plenty of ports on it. It's all up. If you're after a laptop for a student for basic needs, someone that's just going to log in and watch a bit of YouTube, check some emails, Chrome and things like that, and you prioritize a solid build quality and very good battery life, then the VivoBook 16, and I'm sure the 14 as well, is going to have you covered there for that base. Thanks a lot for watching this review here of the ASUS VivoBook 16.